Today we find out if the newest card in Marvel Snap is something that you should quickly pick up. Find out what's going on as I hereby invite everyone to join me on my adventures through Marvel Snap. Hey everybody, it's Annabelle. Today we have the card known as Speed. Speed is a superhuman teenager who is the reincarnated son of Vision and the Scarlet Witch and the older twin brother of Wicca. His powers come from his uncle Quicksilver, and due to his birth parents being divorced, he got picked on in school. He fought back a lot, and eventually this led to him going to a juvenile detention center where he met a girl who he instantly fell for. And after she found out his story, she made him promise that next time he would run away. Speed tried to run away from his next fight and accidentally vaporized his skull. This caused him to be sent to a high-powered correctional facility that dampened his powers, where they intended to turn him into a weapon, before being rescued by the Young Avengers. The team were searching to find new recruits, as Iron Lad had indicated, and it was only after being freed from his cell that any connection to Wicca was known, let alone that the two had been twins at one point. Speed's personality was affected after spending years as just a body used for experimentation. Young Avengers helped him in this regard. He was glad to join up with them as he spent a lot of time in his own isolation, even before being released from prison. He now helps the teams in battles, making quick work of many a foe. He will also quickly develop a playful relationship with anyone on the team who is younger than him or newer than him, making them feel wanted. Speed seems to resist all forms of authority as a matter of pride. He has little regard for laws and is known for showing off. He commits property damage with reckless abandonment and is fairly impulsive, arrogant, rebellious, and easily distracted. He is not all bad, however, as he is also loyal, brave, heroic, friendly, and protective of the others in the Young Avengers. He still likes to feel like an outsider, even though he now has a family, and is probably the most immature of the group, but he uses this immaturity to help the younger members feel welcome. Speed can run, move, and react at speeds far greater than the average human. He can also generate vibrations in a manner that causes the solid object to explode or for him to walk through that solid object. His brain processes information at an accelerated rate to match his bodily speed, enabling him to perceive the surroundings while traveling at high velocity. To him, that makes the world seem as though it's moving in slow motion. Speed uses his energy to move, think, and react at superhuman speeds. His entire body is adapted towards the rigors of high-speed running. This is represented in Marvel Snap by the fact that each turn that you use all of your energy to move cards out of, onto the battlefield, he will get a little bit stronger. So in Marvel Snap, he is a three cost, a three power, with the description of Ongoing, he will gain plus one power for each turn in which you spend all of your energy. So it doesn't have to happen every turn, but each turn that you do spend all of your energy, he'll gain one power whether he's in your deck, on the battlefield, or in your hand. So my recommendation on this particular one is I gave him a four star rating. He almost got a 5-star rating, believe it or not. There are a few things that bring him down from being a complete 5-star, but there's a lot to go for him being on a 4-star. Now, if you were to look at him just as a normal card, you'd say that he was a 3-3, which basically would make him equivalent to a Rhino. But to say that is kind of um, unfair to speed. The two cards that you got to look at the most that he comes closest to are either Cassandra Nova, where Cassandra Nova can have that high power spike immediately, 
but can get worse if things mess up in, in the game. Or, the other card you need to really look at, believe it or not, is the Gladiator. Now, you have, on an average game, you have six turns. This starts at three. So if you hit all six turns, this goes all the way up to nine. So if you miss one turn, you're basically at the same point of Gladiator. People do hard cast Gladiator just to get that power spike with the possible downside of you could um, get a card that your opponent didn't want you to have on the field, or you didn't want your opponent to have on the field, I should say. This is basically the equivalent of getting a 3-7, 3-8 a lot of times. This can go to 3-9 on a normal game, and if you try to squeeze in magic on this and you hit everything correct, you can go basically to a 3-10. Now, do you have to always go to a 310? No. It, this can basically miss three drops and still be a 3-6, which is average. If they're missing more than three turns where you're not using all your energy in a normal game, you've lost that game regardless. So this is like a 3-6, 3-7, which is basically what Cassandra Nova is getting to nowadays. On turn three, and you have to cast the Cassandra Nova right on three to get that seven nowadays. Now, there are some um, negatives to this deck. It is susceptible to Rogue, and it is susceptible to Enchantress. Now, the thing is, is most people don't play Enchantress, and if they want to waste the Enchantress on the speed, it means that they don't have the Enchantress to waste on something else down the road. As for Rogue, again, same thing happens with Rogue, and the thing with how speed works is if your opponent isn't built to have this deck, you're now making them either have had to have played correctly up until they play Rogue, which means if they skip a turn or didn't play correctly on a turn or have an energy less, they don't have the same power spike as the speed does, and now for the rest of the game they have to play on curve to get the power off of it. So it's kind of like a red hole being on their side of the screen almost. It is positive against Loki because if you're playing against Loki, the odds are that Loki has too much energy to use once it gets the speed and didn't use the correct energy to get up to Loki. It's possible that they can. There is a weird Loki wicked build where you basically do a turn one drop, a turn two drop, you play Loki on three, you play Wicca on four, and you just go nuts. But that's not a common build. Another card that we got to talk about, and this is Spectrum. There is a... This is probably one of the best cards for an ongoing Spectrum-like deck. You can play an ongoing on one easily. There, there's some good ongoings on one, like Ant-Man is a fine ongoing on one. Then you can play a good ongoing on two, like Armor. Armor will destroy so many decks on, on two. And then just play, and then just play speed on three, and you've already set up for a good speed turn. So just with those cards alone, if that's all you get. With the Spectrum coming out, you're giving plus two to all of those. So that's another two, four, six, eight, right there. Another card that I've got to look and I don't think anybody has talked about is the Onslaught. The same thing that happens with Double Dinosaur, the same thing that, um, uh, happens when a lot of these decks where you try to play on curve, you can just play down the onslaught. That's another card that you can even put into this deck is the Devil Dinosaur. Even works well with the Spectrum. So, you can play an Agent's deck because Agent's is known for refilling its hand correctly. 
and then play the onslaught at the end and get a big power spike going down. Okay, the card that we gotta talk about every time a three drop comes around is Silver Surfer. Every single time that a new three drop comes around, the card that gets brought up gets mentioned is Silver Surfer. And normally, I don't like saying, hey, it's a three player in Silver Surfer, but this may be the most ridiculous three drop to go into Silver Surfer. This, this, this is a huge, gigantic three drop to go into, into Silver Surfer. To get that plus two power at the end, especially when you can double it, it is huge on speed. Just one kick on Silver Surfer is already bringing this up to a 5. Two kicks is bringing this up to a 7. That's with it not... Without even uh, using energy correctly on any turn. Use energy correctly on any turn, it's already up to an 8. That's huge for a 3 drop. So normally I don't talk about quote, Silver uh, or Silver Surfer in this, I should say. But this is one of the few times where it does make sense. Alright. Let's look at the other cards that we get with this week. This week is a banger week. Besides speed, we also have Jeff the Baby Land Shark. Jeff the Baby Land Shark is a card that if you don't have by this point, I don't know what to tell you. Just go get Jeff. Although he is starting to come down a little bit in play, that's just because there's a lot of twos that you can play now that makes sense, instead of just always being Jeff. But this is also part of the issue with them not wanting to bring down Jeff. A lot of people have Jeff by now. A lot of people have gotten Jeff because it is a card that I would recommend spending tokens on normally. So... The problem is, is that Jeff is good, but the other problem is, is that a lot of people have Jeff. Other than Jeff, we also have Iron Man this, sorry, Iron Lad this week, I should say. Iron Lad is a good card, it's good for auto reveal. It basically is a pseudo draw in your deck, it's a pseudo search in your deck, it, it's a tutor sometimes it's called. A 4-6 is still a decently stat line. The pro again, the issue with Iron Lad is he's been around enough times that a lot of people have him. So for like me specifically, the only card that I would want out of this particular week is the speed, because I do think speed is that good. But if you're missing any of these cards, go for it. If you're missing all of these cards, definitely go for it. If you're white on tokens, Jeff's going to come back. Iron Lad, eh, it's not a bad card. It's just not a card I would recommend if you're white on tokens. Speed, I think, is a card you can just go on. Honestly, Speed might be the best card in this, in this three set right now. And that's even with Jeff being sitting there. Alright, let's find out what we get. Boxes. Ireland! Alright. That I read before, I'll try to come up with something interesting for this Thursday. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, remember, play for fun.